Thing. Order! Order! You are an incorrigible delinquent at times. <laughs> Behave yourself, man! David Grossman being uh, somewhat reassuring there. Now, the statistics on death by suicide are strikingly gender-related. Men take their own life at almost four times the rate of women. In fact, that gap has widened considerably in recent decades. But important as statistics are, they're not the only way of understanding an issue like suicide. Individual stories also illuminate what's really going on. And in that vein tonight on BBC Three, there was a documentary from the rapper Professor Green about the death of his father. It was part of the gender season on the channel. I suppose um, there's very few ways in which you can look at anything that happened in a positive light, but it's mm -hmm. taught me to be one because I would never make the mistakes that he has. No. There's quite a theme between the carpet and the, uh, the sofa in there. Yes, yes. <laughs> <laughs> we look happy. You do, yeah. Well, you was. Well, I'm joined by Professor Green. That is his stage name. He's otherwise known as Stephen Manderson. Stephen, thank you for, for coming on. Thank you, Farrah. Um, why men, do you think? Um, I guess there's still a lot of pressure on men to, to be the archetypal man, you know, to be hard. Um, we've, a lot of men feel the need to project that image. Um, we still carry a lot of bravado and a lot of pressure. Um, perhaps we haven't, as a society, developed quite far enough yet. So it's, it's, it's just not expressing feelings and bottling them up? And Completely, yeah, and just feeling that you have to be a certain way in order to be a man. Mm -hmm. to, to think that if you do allow yourself to be vulnerable in any which way, that you're less of a man. Um, it's interesting, yes, because you, you go back and you talk to your father's best friend, best man and best friend. Best man, yeah. He had no idea. He seemed to... It was a complete surprise to him and that you your know, father would have taken his life. Yeah, and... I think that's the same in so many cases. You know, we've done a lot of research for the programme and so many of the stories are the same. And I've spoken to a lot of people online via social media um, since I've started to, to help raise awareness for this subject. And just so many of the stories, although they're always original to the person, yeah. they, they are so similar in ways. Does laddism, the, the, the culture of jocular guys slapping each other on the back, you know, <laughs> playing practical <laughs> jokes, does that somehow, does that get in the way or not? Um, I think maybe, but... It's quite difficult, isn't it? Because when you have got something going on, I think, do you know, I think onus is on, is on all of us to really ask the right questions. Because sometimes it's difficult. You don't want to really delve too deep, even though you can see something's going on with someone. So I think onus is on all of us to take, you mm. know, better Protect care each of other. each other. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, one of the things that came out, one of the experts you spoke to, I thought was so interesting, was this point about a generation. Yeah. Uh, because if you look at the where the the high rates are. It seems to be in a generation, actually it's my generation actually, but it was your father's generation. Yeah. It was born in the sort of early 60s, mm -hmm. who had a higher rate of suicide in their 30s and it now has moved up into the 40s. Yeah, well no, it was, I think it was, it was actually in their 20s and you still, you know, I mean I, was, I wasn't really around for that, you know, but there was obviously a political change. There was a lot of things that they endured in their lives, but it was also the stiff British upper lip. Society is, is different, but I don't think men in particular have perhaps caught up as a woman's role has become more defined, a man's has become less so. You know, stress used to be, um, you know, if you were under attack or if you were starving, whereas nowadays stress exists in every aspect of our lives, and I don't think we've really caught up to deal with that. One of the things that I was struck by in the film was family. I mean, your, your relationship with your father, he was estranged, he, he yeah. left you as a child, so it was difficult for you and him. Um, he had had similar problems in his family. Yeah. Some that I only found out about for the first time yeah. on camera. But I wonder whether you came out feeling kind of more conservative about family life and the importance of kind of, I don't know, trying to 
keep bonds together and keep relationships working. I wonder whether that was something... Th yeah, I think family, yeah, definitely family is, is important and, and keeping those relationships yeah. intact is, but as a child it was hard for me of because course. I felt you know, as though you know it wasn't my responsibility yeah. and actually what led to the last time we spoke was me, even though I'd said that I'd never make myself vulnerable again, mm. it was making myself vulnerable and reaching out to him because it was always, you know, my, my great-grandmother when she was alive who would write letters to his best friend, Ken Bailey, um, who would put us back in touch. But I did, I put my neck on the line to speak to him again and unfortunately he, it, he let me down again, yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, it has to be said, that, 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 and you, again, this was something that was... I had learned learned about in watching your film was the degree to which I suppose you might call it contagion that if you were exposed to someone who's taken their life and you're vulnerable you're more likely to need help or yeah to... and my brother's sorry my brother my dad's yeah. brother took his life yeah. two years prior so that was obviously part of it there's something called a perfect storm of events and you know bereavement grieving so all the kinds of things that contribute to that my dad had pretty much been through and to find out stuff like that was to th I mean, to think about what anyone goes through when they're in that position and when... And, and I, this is the one thing that I hope comes from the programme, is that we change the perception of people who take their own mm. lives because yeah. there's this ignorance towards it, which only helps the taboo, you know, and, mm. and, and creates more stigma around it. You know, people who take their own lives are not selfish. They, they, they often think quite the opposite, and that's what I hope changes. Mm. What would you say to him now? My dad? Mm. You muppet. You idiot. All right, Stephen, thank you very much.